Hello and welcome to Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonio and as always it's a pleasure to have you here and thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. I wasn't planning to have um, a podcast episode or to be broadcasting at this particular time. I was planning to perhaps do um, the Majesty Sussex Report after dark um, tonight. So, but I came across this video and I got a little bit angry, then I got angrier, and then I said, well, you can't stay in the state of anger, so do something about it. So I did something about it. And now you get to listen to me <laughs> and watch me um, uh, react and what I wrote. And here is the video. Legal technicalities to one side. He believes that illegal methods were used to gather information on him. <laughs> well, they, and he well, says, yeah. and he says, they left him paranoid, uh, phobic, depressed. They ruined his relationships. As somebody who is involved by your own admission, yeah. does that leave you with a, a sense of guilt or shame? Well, not really, because we did much worse to his dad. And uh, his dad was <clears throat> just dismissed it, oh, those annoying newspaper people, and you know, got over it. So, I mean, Prince Harry's big problem, he's got Prince in his name, so he's offered a castle when he was a teenager, turned it down, and was born in an incredibly privileged position. Uh, there's a small possibility that he might have risen to be head of state of, you know, Canada, Australia, 14 countries. So I think, and we were paying for it, public paid for him, so I think we had every right to, I don't know about listening to his phone calls, but... That was um, illegal. It was, but, you know, you could say taking drugs is illegal, so catch, you know, takes a... Two wrongs don't make a right, of course. Yes, but you need someone who's kind of been there to be able to catch people doing that, and that's the balance, isn't it? You've got someone's mental health at stake, possibly, as his mother indeed suffered. I mean, I chased his mother a lot, but, I mean, I think... Chased as in? Well, I chased around the world for about five years. So this interview was uh, recorded last year, June, um, around the same time, um, and I, I, I kept, I kept thinking, how could I've had missed this? Like, I, and then I realized I didn't have a podcast, um, I didn't have a channel um, at that at that point, but I, I was not aware of this at all, and I, I've, I've watched it a few times now and every time I get angrier I get angrier at the people who select they make a choice to continue to harass Prince Harry and Meghan the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex. Because they know what exactly Harry is talking about. They fully know what he's trying to do. And still, they go on their TV shows, they write these absurdities they invite these so-called royal experts and insiders which every time they open their mouth an hour later you can prove that they what they just said was a lie but they continue to do it you have almost an entire channel talk whatever that is dedicated basically to making money off of Harry and Meghan because that's all they talk about the entire freaking day. So, I, I, I put pen to paper, as I usually do when 
I am frustrated and need to get stuff out of my system. And, you know, just sort of writing things that, 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 that came to mind. And I, I've since revised this a little bit, but, you know, I wanted to come online and um, share this with you folks because for, for watching that, that clip for the first time, my stomach is just, it's just, because the struggle I'm having is, is the people. It's the people. Because no one, no one can watch that interview unless you are an absolute moron. Unless you are completely deprived of oxygen or you don't understand the language or something. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I am, I'm running out of excuses. If you watch that and you come away still feeling that, yeah, yeah, I still hate them. Everything they say is a lie. She's a narcissist. Oh, he's just a puppy following her. The other thing too, and this this really drives me nuts, and I mentioned it in my last um, episode. This whole thing about altering the 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 face and and making someone look um, not as the original photograph intended which these derangers do all the time with Megan's image, drives me nuts. And then what they do is they alter a picture and then they discuss how ugly she looks. Are you people, where, can we, you know, you really need to go and speak with someone. You really, really, really need to do it for at, at, at this point, it's not even for your own mental health. It's, it's, it's for the health of the public at large. I digress. So, the interview with Paul is quite concerning. I mean, yes, it's a year old, but I'm seeing it with fresh eyes right now. So, the his comments regarding Prince Harry and the broader implications of media practices have raised significant ethical questions and highlight a troubling mindset prevalent within that industry. Paul's statements, piece by piece, as I look at them, demonstrate the ethical violations and lack of empathy and link to a broader issue in 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 the media landscape including insights right that I will discuss from James O'Brien on the emotional development of boys who went to boarding school or schools in in the UK well he talks more about boarding schools and I did a podcast about it so first, first let's. I'm going to take it piece by piece here. So, admission of guilt without remorse. Paul begins by acknowledging the use of illegal methods to gather information on Prince Harry. He stated, right, that's what he said, well, not really, because we, 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 we did much worse to his dad. Oh really? So so so, but 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 do do you see the mentality here? We did much worse to his dad. What does what does the king say to to um, Harry, Prince Harry, when when he's brought up this situation? Well, boy, you know, I uh, my good boy, you know, you, you, your your grandmother put up with it, and I had to put up with it, and Camilla put up with it, and we all had to put up with it. So do you she you just have to put up with it. So, generational trauma just being passed down. And what a coward of a father. <sighs> the, 
this admission is immediately followed by a disturbing lack of remorse, implying that because they targeted Prince Charles more harshly, Prince Harry's suffering is somehow justified. This attitude trivializes the ethical breaches and harm inflicted. So, my next point, dismissal of mental health impact. Paul mentions Prince Harry's mental health issues, including paranoia, phobias, and depression, but dismisses them. Uh, actually, the host men mentioned them. Um, but Paul dismisses them by comparing Harry's response to his father's reactions. He says, his dad was just, um, his dad would just dis dismiss this and, and, and just sort of say these, these annoying newspaper people and get over it. Do you think he got over it? Don't you think that man has a lot of like mental issues going on that he needs to really talk about? Let's not even start with the whole thing about, you know, he, he needs to have Camilla as his mommy, right? Allegedly, allegedly, and allegedly. So this statement is not only insensitive, that's, that's, that's the, the kindest word I can find, but also dangerously undermines the severity of mental health struggles. And we see this for some reason throughout the UK, especially within these men in media. Pierce Morgan did the same thing. But I don't believe her. I don't believe, no, 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 no. And when they harass these women, because they've harassed many, it's like a sport. It's a game to them. They see nothing wrong in it. Next point, entitlement and privilege. Paul's assertion that Prince Harry's big problem is he got Prince in his name reflects a deep-seated resentment towards Harry's privileged position. He suggests that because Harry was born into royalty, his suffering is less valid. His view ignores the fundamental principle that privilege does not exempt one from pain or from trauma, you freaking moron. Allegedly. Next point. Justification of illegal activities. Paul openly admits to illegal activities <laughs> equating phone hacking with drug use, saying, I don't listen to I didn't listen really it's just phone calls like I get but but it was it was illegal, yes, you know, but uh he attempts to rationalize these actions by comparing them to the necessity of catching criminals. So Prince Harry is a big drug dealer now, right? That's what the kid, the 16-year-old kid. This false equivalence fails to acknowledge the profound violation of privacy and trust. So you're going to go after a prince that is doing what almost every other teenager does. But the corrupt politicians that, 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 that are stealing money, making deals under the table and bringing Britain down, 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 down. Oh, we, we, can't, we can't find anything there. No, 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 no. We don't have enough staff to like follow them or any, any of this stuff. Oh, no, we can't do any of that, of course, because that would be in the interest of the public. That's in the interest of the public, you moron. These people don't understand what their jobs are. Or maybe they do understand it because that's what their, their lords above them told them they needed to do. Damn. 
Next point, lack of empathy and accountability. Throughout the interview, Paul shows no empathy or remorse for the damage that he has caused. He states, well, I, I, I chased his mother a lot, chased her around the world for five years. Look at how he says it. No care in the world. She lost her life. He lost years with his mother. His children will not have the privilege and the honor to meet her in person. To know what a hug from her would feel like. Of her spoiling them. And he could care less. He references the relentless pursuit of Princess Diana, which tragically contributed to her that, as if it was nothing. His nonchalant attitude towards this fact is deeply troubling. Deeply. So, what I wanted to do, because as I was watching this also, I, I just kept thinking about what um, James O'Brien had said. Right? And I'm going to link this, and I don't know if Paul went to board, board in school, he probably did. Um, but I'm going to link it to the board in school issues that I raised a little while ago or was talking to you folks about. So, Emotional development in boarding schools. Let, let's, let's, let's start there. James O'Brien has discussed how boys in boarding schools can become emotionally detached and less empathetic. This phenomena is relevant here. As many media executives and editors like Paul come from privileged backgrounds, right? That, that 1%. You go to Fleet Street and there, there aren't a lot of minorities. And they all went to the same schools. They all are in the same circles. So they come from that same privileged background. And often attend the same schools. The lack of empathy displayed in the interview may stem from an upbringing that valued hmm, toicism over emotional intelligence. So I'm going to be stoic. Do you know that whole saying that, that the UK has? And I'm not going to try and say it because maybe I'll mess it up because I mess up every freaking saying. But that stiff, stiffer upper lip. Get on with it. So you're being abused, you're being hit, you're being, all this stuff has happened to you, but sit for upper lip. There's no discussion. Keep it all inside. An excellent book to, 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 to read also. I'm not plugging anything here. But even if you watch the interviews that he has done, is, is the Earl Spencer, Prince Harry's uncle. And he talks about the abuse at boarding school. And he, he went to boarding school, I think, when he was, what, six or seven or eight? Like, like really young. And these boys are being abused. Physically, mentally, and not just by, 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 by hitting them. Like, some of them are being... You can fill in the blank. And their parents can care two banana chips. Allegedly. They don't want to discuss it. So, as James O'Brien have discussed, their emotional intelligence is, is, is like, it's likely at zero. 
So what does this mean for the broader media practice? Paul's attitude is unfortunately reflective of a wider culture within the UK media. Because we, we see it today with these stupid headlines that they usually have. The misinformation. The clickbaiting. Editors and owners often prioritize sensationalism and profit over ethical considerations. This leads to in, 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 in invasive practices such as the phone hacking and relentless paparazzi pursuit which can have devastating consequences on individual lives. But None of that is discussed in the UK. What what do they discuss? Oh well, well I know that I know that the, the, the Queen was very upset at him. That he, I can't believe that he did this to the Queen. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, what my sources are saying to me, it was Megan who did it. You see, Megan, because the American, the the, the Negro American, um, 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 did not understand our culture because we are not racist at all. At all, we're not racist at all. The Negro did not get it. No, she didn't get it, baby. Of course she didn't. She wouldn't get it. Because you see, a lot of us were under the impression that you folks were sophisticated, well-educated, understood. I mean, you all boast about helping <laughs> get rid of 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 um, slavery and and this is, but 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 you don't mention that for years you kept paying the people who who owned the plantations and owned the slaves, but you didn't give give any reparations to the people who were the slaves, but you gave it to the slave owners. Public trust and accountability. The media has a responsibility. Let me, let me say this. Responsible media. Any media that, that wants a society that is better, that is well informed, that is critical, right? They have a responsibility to the public to report truthfully and ethically. When journalists and editors act without regard for the impact of their actions, he would hope that public trust would erode. And I don't know if public trust is eroded in these in these publications because they look at the end of the day, it's all about the pound, it's all about the dollar, it's all about the euro. Supply and demand. If you are not clicking on that article that says Meghan Markle this, Prince Harry that, if you're not clicking on it, they get the message very quickly. If you stop buying or subscribing to this nonsense, they get the message very quickly. Because let's face it, folks. The regulation the regulatory body in the UK, I rest my case, that's all. It is crucial for, for, for media to hold itself accountable and prioritize the well-being of those they report on. I know this is fantasy, but I have to say it. Because someone needs to say it. <laughs> Paul's interview is a stark reminder of the ethical, ethical failings within parts of the media industry, or perhaps the entire industry. His lack of remorse 
and justification for illegal activities highlight a dangerous mindset that prioritizes profit over people. By understanding the emotional development of indi individuals in privileged positions and acknowledging the broader issues within the media, we can begin to advocate for a more empathetic and responsible press. Do you, if you want it, do you, you have to demand it. UK, okay? you have to demand it. They're not, they're not going to give it to you. It's like working in any, any corporation sometimes, you know? Yes, you may have corporations that, that, that have a more fair structure, but there, there's others. If, if you don't go in and say, listen, I've been working really hard. I do overtime. I, I, I do this. I, I'm involved in this over here. I've taken on more responsibilities. And I would like... A raise and a promotion, the two things together, or a raise. The promotion can come later. Because sometimes if you don't ask, you don't get it. You just don't. Because they're not going to give it to you. The thing for me that strikes me so much about how the media in, in the UK conduct themselves. And I guess I'm starting to see it also within different markets, right? But, but in the UK, it's really pronounced. It's, you can really see it. It's, it's very clear. There, there, there is no fog around it. You'll have an interview like that. And, and, and look, the interviewer did well, right? She asked pertinent questions. And then... 30 minutes later, she will be discussing with her co-host, Bash and Harry and Megan. I'm not saying she directly, I'm saying, but that's what they usually do. Or they'll have some royal correspondent who, who has a stick up his somewhere. Maybe it's a lack of a stick up somewhere. Maybe that's why they're so angry all the time. There are these things they can buy, you know. Do they know that? Maybe maybe we should send them that as a gift. I don't know. But they will be saying these awful things, making these assertions. You know, the one that well, I, I love many of them, right? There is there's there's just love there. I just I just love I love seeing how easily these 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 lies just 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 so eloquently and 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 it's like poetic you know like it's it's, it's like poetry just coming out of their mouths and they have this little this little you know i i am i am the face of truth i am the face of the defender of our monarchy i am i am you are just a bunch of pathetic little boys who want to play dress up and want to play king and queen and princess. Come on, admit it. And the other one, the, 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 the Angela. The, the Angela goes, but I know Harry, I'm not even going to try, okay? This is just my voice doing like whatever. I know Harry. I spent 18 months with Harry. You, 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 <laughs> you wake up lying. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny. Because what, what, and I don't think they fail to realize this. I think they know what they're doing. There's enormous amount of damage. And there's no lessons learned. Because, look, they're still doing it. They, 
they're doing it to Diana's son. And they promised they wouldn't. And then we have these other racists, because that's the only thing I can find to call them, who are like, no, we, 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 we just want Harry to come back. He, he was such a good boy. We always loved him. We know he was charismatic and he was always good, you know? And, and, and then when we, we all know, because we're all reading between the lines, right? Like, like the rest of us. But they think we're stupid. That we don't get it. They all, yes, we want him to come back. Did you forget that he got married? Did you forget he has two kids? Oh no, you just want to delete them, right? You don't want your lily white, blue blooded familia royal. What was it that 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 woman said? Um, oh, I'm not going. I'm going to repeat it. Because I did a podcast on on her situation too, so and then and then she has the gall to go on morning television and said her words on WhatsApp were misinterpreted. Woman, on under what construction of words in the English language was what you said misunderstood? I do not comprehend and I'll, I think I, I, I never will comprehend the because I think it's a choice right I really think it's a choice because I've sat down with people who were willing to have an open discussion and they will give me their points and say, well, Antonio, this is what I think. Here's why I think it. And I'll go, okay, okay, I see what you're saying there. I see where you're coming from. Okay, here's what I think. And this is why I think it. And, and there are times where I've had discussions where we will just agree to disagree because we see that particular issue or we come from it, from a very different background and world. I find it that people who have not experienced racism think they understand it, but they don't. They don't. Because they don't quite understand what it does. I mean, they know they reap the benefits of it. Oh, no, please don't get me wrong. They want it kept. They like the structures the way it is. Trust me, they do. Right? Because the minute, the second, some of that privilege is challenged, oh, they go haywire. Look at what happened when that co the, 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 the co-host just challenged. He didn't even challenge Pierce Morgan. He just highlighted evidence. He just highlighted the truth. Right? This is not a story. This is factual. This is what happened. And that was just for like, what? The, 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 the guy didn't even finish his, his thought. And Pierce Morgan got up, soiled his pants and walked out, allegedly. Well, he didn't soil his pants. I don't know why I said that. I, I, I meant it as a metaphor, like, you know, you get nervous, so 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 things can happen. I'm going to take a sip of water here because I need it. So, he couldn't take a few minutes of his co-anchor just relating back to him the truth. He walked out. Jeremy Vine, he went to court, okay, an entire case. He is on his show and he, he talks about what, what, what this stuff does, 
that you know he's in the, 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 the stalker or whatever is inciting people and, and if the person gets created they can come and it can he's he has the entire scenario that is happening to him and he was so distressed went to court won his case and then the next day he comes into work and does the exact same thing to Megan. The exact same thing to Megan. And whether or not he related the two things is completely by choice. It's by choice. Because they know. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. When these people say we want Harry back and they don't mention Meghan, they don't mention Prince Archie and Princess Elizabeth, they know what they're doing. The whole thing now, I saw it the other day, someone is, is and this is how they start to set things up, right? Someone started to, to, to compare, and I don't like to bring the kids in into this, so I'm just relating what, what was in um the the uh, the article i read so they set up an account and basically it said princess charlotte is a real princess do you see where this is going she's a real princess and then comparing her to some other prince i i haven't watched the thing so i can't i'm just this is the third party that i, I read so i can't say much about it except for what I for what I read and basically uh, making the other European princesses look uh, you know saying 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 not so kind things about them but Princess Charlotte is 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 the you see you see how it's 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 starting so you start to create the persona right you start to create. I think Harry in Spare at one point, he said, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, and if he didn't say this, maybe <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, and I have it living in my head for some reason. But even if he didn't say it, it it's also very prevalent in, in, in psychology and um, terms. So, self fulfilling prophecies. If someone keeps calling you an idiot every day, you start to believe you're an idiot. So you behave like an idiot. I was listening to a podcast said that said um, institutions intentionally will put race and gender on exams because they don't really need it, but they'll do it intentionally. You know why? Because when I have to write there that I am a minority, everything that society has taught me about being a minority, I'm not good enough, I'll never be good enough, you're stupid, you're not as good as you know a white person, um, you're trouble, all those things come right back to you. And they do it also to women, especially in things like engineer or math or stuff like that, because it does the same psychological thing. So when you have to put female, all of your experiences as a female, how society has branded you, right, and told you, well, girls are not good at math. Girls are not good at coding. <laughs> and so they did the study and when they was on the exam, you had to write your gender and, and your race. So you, um, the people did, um, who I noticed, when, uh, they, they, did, they did worse. Like they, they, they basically failed. Now, when those, those two things were not there, they excelled. So don't underestimate the conditioning that we all have because we carry the we we carry it we 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 carry we carry it with us 
And for many people who don't deal with it, like Paul here, so if 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 Paul went to a you know one one of these boarding schools and even if he didn't but he went to a school where you know they they exercise the privilege of <sighs> hidden children then he might have some unresolved trauma that he needs to deal with and for me, the underlying thing here, as I said before, of the entire media in the UK, because it's all of them, man. It's all of them at this point. Okay, except for like one or two. But that willfully continue with this charade or charade. It's just very telling and I honest to goodness think they all need to go to therapy if not therapy do some really deep diving into your psyche and 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 start to open that bag that you've got of your past baggage and start to face it because the way he sat there the way he even spoke about Princess Diana. And he's comparing that, well, I need it, you know, someone needs to be there in order to catch these things. Go to, go to work that matters to society. Go to work to, to, to capture corruption. Go to investigations into these conglomerates and companies that just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, influencing our politics, our way of living. We have an entire corrupt system. And it's never been more so exposed than now. Anyone that that is has 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 a little bit of critical thinking and can honestly look at big picture and not let people convince you that they're they're entitled to wipe out a population wipe out a people because there was an attack in October the conflict between those two have been going on for a while now. Because some people are being occupied. Right? This wasn't a one-time thing that just happened. And I'm going to stop myself there before because this is this is this is not what this podcast or this um subject is about right now. So, looking at how he equates, because Harry has or was born into privilege, because he has the, 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 the word prince in front of his name, that should give him authorization to do whatever he wants to do. Because the taxpayer fund, the, 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 the monarchy, excuse me, that entitles him. So let me ask you this question, Paul. Taxpayers also pay for the politicians, right? The House of Lords and all of that stuff. How many of those are, are you investigating? Or are you investigated? How many of those did you follow? How many of those did you find doing drugs and, and, and having liaisons with, 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 with people they shouldn't be having liaisons with? How many of those did you do? Just a question. Because you see, I would argue that that is in the interest of the public because its impact in society is greater than a 16-year-old who has just been a 16-year-old. Or you continuing to abuse a child, you abuse the mother, 
and to your admission, abused a father. You know, I keep thinking of how, oh, Megan Marco, may God bless you. Always, always. And I don't care. I really do not care whether she messes up here or there or something, right, to me. <laughs> And she is human, and and it's going to happen. Same with Harry, because they're human beings, right? Go mess up, girl. Do whatever you want to do. You've got an eternal past with me. Eternal. I mean, you don't know who the heck I am. <laughs> you don't need a past from me. But I'm telling you, I, God willing, I'll be 80. You see, I have, I listen, listen I, I, I've been eating healthy. I, <laughs> I go on my bike every day. Okay, I'm lying. I don't go every day. But I'm getting my, my, my stuff, my steps in and stuff. So, you know, you need to start thinking about your health. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the, the goal is, is, to, is to have a healthy and, and a long life. God willing, of course. But I usually, you know, I'll, if, 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 I, if I am able to, if I have the, God has given me the grace to be at that age, I'll, I'll be like, yeah, what, what did you say she did? Ah, nothing. That's good. Good for her. Because she was God sent. God sent not only to show Harry that there is a path, right? But that by the grace of God, they were able to get out. Because I have no doubts whatsoever because they already had started with that whole chimpanzee nonsense. Remember, William had Harry already set up to 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 to, to be his his um his 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 toy that that he can just send and do whatever. And then if something happened, it just he could just 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 blame it on despair. Let him take all the abuse. For heaven's sake, he was he was. <laughs> oh, I was going to say something and, and I caught myself there, but I'll just say he was handing over some of his husband duties to Harry, if you want me to be honest, and get your minds out of the gutter. Because when you looked at the three of them together, and I think that is why, you know, she was happy and things kind of worked because... You know, Harry was there. So both of them can just use him for whatever they needed. There was this skit, I don't remember on what show, either Saturday Night Live, and women were complaining about their spouses and that the guy, the husband, wasn't very like, you know, romantic, and he didn't care about this, and feelings, and all of that, and they were getting upset, and the guys were like, well, I don't know what to do, I want to watch my football, right, like, I don't know, um, are, are men going to always be portrayed as a bunch of <laughs> moronic idiots? <laughs> Mind you, society has, has, has raised a bunch of moronic idiots, um, but anyways, getting back to the, the um, skit. And so this, this company came out with the, the gay doll. So the gay doll was a life-size doll. And husband can, 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 can buy it for whatever the price was. And the gay doll did everything that the wife needed that the husband didn't want to do or didn't have the emotional capacity to do or whatever. So... 
the skit, the part of the skit that they showed was the husband and and wife. They're in bed. They they're being intimate, and you know it's done. And um, so he he gets he he gets off the bed, and the gay dog gets in the bed and cuddles the wife. <laughs> Jesus forgive me. <laughs> so cuddles the wife and it <laughs> starts to speak <laughs> sweet talk to her. And it's just the most beautiful thing. And then she she they show they show a scene where they go shopping and and she's trying on these dresses and he's like, oh God no. Oh yes. You're killing it, babe. And, and it was just, 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 I don't know. It just, it still makes me laugh. And I am sure, I am sure there were like hundreds of husbands that saw that and went, gosh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I started this podcast today angry and upset and I'm I'm finishing it with a little bit of laughter I think I said what I needed to say um I I I don't have anything else to say I'm just very it it every time I think I think someone said this the other day that um we think they can go lower we realize that there's a basement in the basement of the basement in the basement of another basement and there's another basement so it, they keep going lower but for me, um, being able to watch part, part of this clip today, and because um, someone reposted it, and to really, I mean, thing, things, things are clear to me, right? And it's clear to a lot of us. We, we know what's happening. But to even get more evidence of it, it's sort of very daunting at the same time it, it's it's frustrating because i'm like what is it that the people on the island and other people are not getting here is the information these people are saying it and you still don't get it and listen if you don't want to pay for the monarchy then don't pay for it don't pay for leave, but stop abusing them. Because look, I I I, I don't have like you know. I th I think Char Charles is 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 absolutely absolutely a disgrace, right? But I have to also hold space for him, because of how he was raised, the trauma he probably has, and. You know, he's, he's, he's nicely controlled by the woman who, who mothered him and gave him other things too and told him he can take a tampon and do things with it and he can be jealous of the tampon. Gosh, that's some kinky stuff there. Oh, my darling. I just, I'm just so jealous of that of that, that tampon. I wish I were, oh gosh, Antonio, stop it. Um, in all serious, serious, seriousness though, like it's, stop this cycle of abuse. And if you think, because this is the argument that was used, that they wanted, you know, Megan to perform Show us the baby, bring the baby, show the children. And now they're getting back to that again. Show us the kids, show us the kids. They're like a bunch of like evil. Oh God, I don't even want to say it, but so I'm not going to say it. But, and their argument was, well, we, we, we pay for you. Okay. I don't want to be abused. So I'm going to divest from your thing, and that's what Harry and Megan did. But you see, they can't let them go because if they let them go, 
Then, you know, Charlotte's the one they're going, oh, but she is this and she's that. They, who they're, 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 they're molding already. She might go, I don't want this. Louis, who they also already start to like brand him a certain way. Oh, he's, he's like the hairy. He looks like he's going to be trouble. Oh, but he's so cute right now, isn't he? Look at him being a little troublemaker. Yeah. How sad. This whole game. Because to so many of them, it's a game. A game of just lies and lies. This morning, before I came on to, as I was getting... I was I was writing this 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 um, today's stuff. I don't remember his name, but he's on one of the shows, and he's he's still talking about the Photoshop photo. He's literally still saying it's real. That there was only some minor adjustments that Kate was trying to do, and he's sticking by his story. I'm like, dude, Monsieur. Sir, Grandpa, like, hello, hello, gosh, okay, I, I honestly, folks, I was like, I'm, I'm just going to go on for 10 minutes, say my thing and leave, and what, I, I, I've spent an hour, I've spent a bloody hour just talking, I love you folks, thank you for putting up with me. Uh, especially in times like these where I see something, I get upset over it, I take pen to paper, I write something, and I'm like, now I need to share it. I need, I need to go tell my people. <laughs> I need to go tell my people. And um, I hope this is a... F I, I know we know this already. I, I, know, I know we know. But I, 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 I had not seen that, that clip at all. So hopefully if someone ever asked you, no, the UK media is fine, blah, blah, blah. Just say, I've got a clip for you to watch. Okay. Much love. Thank you so much for listening, for being here. Um, thank you for your support of this channel. And um, thank you for everything you do. Because I know so many of you not only come here and and support this channel that um, you're so kind and generous in 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 making sure you know the likes are there and the comments are there and but you 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 attend to so many other um, Sussexes supporting podcasts and you do it so marvelously and with such grace and patience and um especially for people who are new and i'm newish um so sometimes we we make mistakes and you are kind and generous in allowing us to kind of you know come back from those mistakes anyways thank you once again because i don't know what else to say other than thank you because that's what my angelou said we say to god so thank you from the bottom of my heart. I will try maybe and do a podcast tonight after dark, maybe. No promises. And I am, I've been working on music for, um, uh, for the soul. So I really hope you folks, like, it's, it's 30 minutes. Just put it on. And just like sit down and give yourself 30 minutes. Just do nothing. Okay? Relax. Because that's, that's the intention behind all of this. The intention is that, the way I look at this is that we are multifaceted people. Right? We're not just one thing. And I want us to be, well, I, I would like to um, be able for you to come to this channel and um feel like doing a mindful meditation and we've got a series on mindful meditation you go you're like okay i'm going to do this one and you do it and there there are um music playlists 
and you can go listen to some music and and discover some new artists or 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 or, or something right and this new thing that i'm doing for the summer which is you know music for the soul um an interlude it's it's a combination of 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 sort of inspirational music mixed with um fate um soulful music sort of very common so one one can you can and i'm doing imagery also so you can just sort of sit there listen to the music close your eyes if you want or just watch the empty imagery and um for 30 minutes just 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 tell whoever don't bug me i'm going into my zone and it's just to i think to cater to those many sides that we have because sometimes we just need we just need 30 minutes of calm right and there i went talking talking more blah 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 okay this blah 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 is ending it matna thank you love you all take care of yourself bye for now Your scars are